Fashion Anthropology, Fashion Genealogy, l'anthropologie de la mode. Je suis Tiffany Godoy. On Fashion Anthropology, we deep dive into the movements and minds shaping fashion culture today. From street to luxe, Shanghai to Paris, underground to legendary. Slam Jam, connector, patron, platform, movement, attitude. Slam Jam. In 2015, Lucas started a new type of project along with Matthew Williams, the brand Alix, a separate company from Slam Jam. Understated clothes, the hypest friends wearing them, a culture deeply rooted in music in California, and an added modern touch of sustainability. Matthew's successful collaborations with Nike and Montclair Genius prove that once again Luca Benini's instinct is spot on. Hi, I'm Matthew Williams. I'm the creative director of Alix. Here's Matthew and members of his own creative community. Fashion anthropology. Fashion anthropology. Um, Alix. I L L L. Episode Go. Hi, my name is Alix and this is my brand. In house no fashion brand. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, your trajectory, like how you started and how you started in California and ended up here and in the Marais presenting your fec- your second uh, runway show, and then talk about your relationship um, with Slam Jam. Mm-hmm. And I think those are, the, and then kind of more overall picture of how uh, street fashion and culture is now colliding with uh, the old world. I think you're really one of the people that embodies the that change? Well, since a young age, I always really liked clothing. It started with sport and like school shopping, you know what I mean, before the school year. I grew up in Central California, which is a small town called Pismo Beach. So it's three hours south of San Francisco and three hours north of Los Angeles. So I would, to get any kind of music that was, you know, not popular or underground, or get any fashion that wasn't like J.C. Penney or something like that. Even, you know, sports clothes outside of Foot Locker. We had to go to San Francisco or L.A. I'd do like a, a shopping trip in like August with my mom, and those clothes would kind of last me until the next August. And that's when I really got into fashion, but it was really more like you know, understand style a bit more because like the skateboarders I looked up to or the musicians that I liked, I kind of tried to emulate how they dressed. And it wasn't until I met a friend who had a brand, he was around 10 years older than me. And um, I went and interned for him for a summer in college when I was 19. And that was when I really understood like, whoa, you could actually be a designer and Then I went back to school after that summer internship, and I couldn't stop thinking about how much fun that was. I was like, wow, this is really what I want to do. So I decided to drop out of uh, college. I was going to school in Santa Barbara as like an art studio major. And then I wanted to apply to fashion school and try to go to school in New York. And and then ended up, for one reason or another, not being able to get into Parsons. And... I had already had a job working, so I just continued and um, just really started from the ground up, starting in production and then later like moving into design and working for different companies in my early 20s and then bouncing back between New York and L.A. And then I got asked to make some costumes for different musicians in L.A. and uh, that's when I started working in music and then that led to around like an eight-year career of doing stages and costume design and kind of being a liaison for the artist with brands and their record label and whatever they needed me to do. I kind of tried to emulate how they dressed and then I wanted to apply to fashion school and try to go to school in New York and then ended up not being able to get into Parsons. Matthew Williams worked as a creative director for Lady Gaga and worked with Kanye West at his creative studio, Donda. There, he met Virgil Abloh, Heron Preston, and together they founded Bintrill, a project which fused product with music, events, and personalities. It allowed me to really experiment with a lot of different 
mediums of, and methods of creativity where I was collaborating with people that were experts in those fields. So when I got married and had my second child, I really wanted to go back to fashion and start my own brand, which I originally always wanted to do since I was a teenager. And uh, I started Alix and I, and I kind of used all the different things I learned in my 20s and, and just applied it to the brand now. So When you look at Alix as a company now, what are those divisions? And then where do you see it going? What is the ultimate vision? The ultimate vision is to just try to create a fashion company or just a, a company that's modern and has some kind of reflection of what it means to live today. So it's producing items that benefit life today. We have our collection, then we have different things within the collection, like visual, which is like basic product that uses uh, regenerated cotton. So it's like, you know, the most sustainable jersey process that's created to man. Kind of going further in that idea of different ways we can use sustainability in high fashion, how we can reduce our, our use of water in the clothes that we make, et cetera. Making things that really last, because to me that's the most sustainable thing is to make a garment that people love and want to keep for decades, you know? Then there's all the commissioned art projects like we're doing with Daniel Shea and Ex Nilo this year. We have our actual physical spaces, which you're in right now, which is our temporary store, showroom space, show space, which is like a creative space that shows our use of material. And it allows like a human to be like inside of, of a world that we created. I mean, and then there's also touch points in, in music that we do for the shows or for films. You know, off the top of my head, that's where it's at right now. I mean, then we have the collaborations that we do with Nike, which is an ongoing project, um, which I'm really proud of, that's all, all around training, and that's, you know, men's and women's. The ultimate vision is to just try to create a fashion company that's modern and has some kind of reflection of what it means to live today. So it's producing items that benefit life today. The Nike Slam Jam legacy continues with Matthews MMW. La longue histoire entre Nike et Slam Jam continue avec la collaboration entre Matthew et Nike qui s'appelle MMW. Fashion anthropology. Here's Jarrett Reynolds, the Nike clothing designer working on all the fire fashion collabos, including Matthew's line. My name's Jarrett Reynolds. I'm the senior design director of Energy Apparel. So I work on basically all the collaborations that we do at Nike. What were some of the challenges of putting the collection together? Because there's like quite complicated buckles on, on a lot of the product. And how did you kind of fuse the technology and the fashion in, in this collection? Um, this is by far the most complicated apparel I've ever worked on, by far. And myself and my team, we've put so much effort into making this work. That's difficult to make really high-performing, highly detailed, slightly avant-garde clothing and apparel. That's hard, but it's we're passionate about it. What were some of the connecting points for for you personally as a designer and and him as a designer, or as guys that are really drawn to to sportswear and to clothing? The first connection point was music. That was the point that we solidified like a taste trust, I guess I could say. Um, skateboarding. We both went to college at UCSB. Little things like that. We both have kids. That moment of like, oh, we have this like shared experience. We have these sh these sh shared um, points of context. Then allows for like the ego to drop and the trust to begin. Whenever we want to work with somebody new, I never want it to be the first time we meet is talking about designs and what are we going to do for this collection. I want it to be about skateboarding and music and art and weird YouTube videos. You can't call it in with these collaborations. You can't just, here's the sketches, go make it. It's, it doesn't work that way. There needs to be this human connection. This is by far the most complicated apparel I've ever worked on. 
Here's Matthew Williams. Fashion anthropology. You kind of like checked off the boxes in the sense of like being at the right place at the right time in terms of cultural shifts. And even growing up, I think, in California and having that background of, of um, sportswear and, you know, the ocean and skateboarding and all BMX and everything that's come from there. And, you know, shoes like Vans and things like that, were, which are part of the kind of uniform. And then um, going into taking the jump and working with someone like Nick Knight at that really critical moment when digital culture was just kind of beginning to explode and you know with and you were with the ultimate image maker and professional and then Ben Trill kind of collaborating with multi-talented um, partners collaborators on things that were t-shirts or tapes or parties experiences I think the path that I've taken it couldn't have been planned it was just really by chance and deciding to leave school and pursue a dream, continuing to go even when I got denied from school, deciding to work in music, moving to London to work with Nick. You know, there's so many things, just writing Luca, my partner, an email, trying to start the project. They're all fortunate things that I happen to, to be able to be a part of. And also just experiencing Los Angeles and New York in the, the time period that I was living there and, and engaging with nightlife and stuff was really formative. So I think, you know, everyone has their own path in their life that they can, you know, pull from. I think I'm, I'm really fortunate that I got to travel around the world pre-social media and, and what it kind of creates with this flatness of everything, every city being similar in a lot of ways now because everyone's aware of what everyone's doing at the same time. There was, like, a lot more diversity in each city's nightlife and shops and et cetera, I would say 10, 15 years ago. And even when, you know, the word streetwear or whatever, that was just like clothing that I was into because of where I was growing up. It wasn't, um, you know, like my dad surfed and there was neighbors I had that their grandparents skated and surfed. So it was like three generations. It's just something you did as a kid. I'm really fortunate that I got to travel around the world pre-social media. What did you think about Slam Jam and why did you reach out to Luca? And can you talk a little bit about him? Yeah, I had made clothes in the past in a, in a lot of different countries for different brands I had worked with. And I knew the kind of product that I wanted to make. And I think there's only a, a couple countries that can make all the different product categories that I wanted to do. And I had met Luca through my wife and also through the, the guys at Stussy because I was doing art direction for Stussy before I met Luca. And uh, I just reached out to him and originally just to make shoes because um, his girlfriend of, of 15 years, Elisabetta, she's an amazing shoemaker she does our shoes now and I, I reached out to do that and after three days hanging out together he was like you know let's do this project together so we started um started the company Aleeks and he's he's just been an amazing partner and support he has 30 years of experience he's one of kind of the original 10 people that were really <laughs> involved in streetwear since the 80s and um he he's brought California a, to Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been uh, an amazing partner and friend, and uh, it's been great to to be able to do this project together. Because prior to this, he had, he had done small brand projects, but not a brand like we do now. So we've built, like, a whole new side of production and sales and marketing that Alix does within the building. So... It's uh, separate from Slam Jam, but we're all family and, and work in the same building. Um, Alix. Hey, my name's Alix. I-L-L-L. Hi, my name is Alix, and this is my brand. So I think this idea of family is really important in street fashion, in Slam Jam culture, and also for the brand Alix. Can you tell me 
how how you feel about that? How important is family for you? Yeah, family is really important to me. You know, I have my wife and three kids, Cairo, Alix, and Valletta. And then my brother-in-law works at the company um, doing photography. My cousin is my assistant. My mother-in-law works at the company as well. I'm sure more of Jen's siblings will, my wife Jen's siblings will end up working for the company in the future. And then on Luca's side, his girlfriend does the shoes. Her daughter works on the design team. It's nice, you know. Jennifer Williams, Matthew no Oksan, Alix no Okasan, to Irona Imide, Alix no brand icon des. Alix? Jennifer Williams. Jennifer Williams, Matthew's wife, Alix's mom, and the face of the brand in many ways. Okay, so we're here on the seventh floor of a parking garage. Alex has taken it over during Fashion Week, and I'm here with Jennifer Williams. So I think what's been a big, a key word throughout this, all of the interviews that I've done for this podcast on Slam Jam is the idea of family and community and tribes. Can you tell me a little bit about the role that plays within Alix? It's named after our daughter, Alix. So we were even waiting. We knew we wanted to start a brand, and we were kind of waiting to decide our daughter's name before we decided the brand's name because Matt really wants to do this, and so do I, for our whole lives. So it was really, it felt good to use something super personal. So that's where the family element started, and it was Matt and I really doing everything. And then um, slowly my cousin Aaron became Matt's assistant. My brother became um, the brand photographer. My stepmom and my dad, my whole family moved to Ferrara, the small town that we live in. And my stepmom now is like the office manager, office mom, helps us with everything. So it's really grown. And then also just being in that community with Luca Benini, who came from also like the original Stussy tribe, he kind of... He was our family, like, as soon as we started the business together. It felt good to use something super personal. He was our family, like, as soon as we started the business together. I know that sustainability is a really strong idea within the Alix world. Can you tell me about some of the pieces and where that comes into play? Anytime we use denim, we try to use a recycled denim. So when we visited the factory that was making the buckles, um, we saw these cool pieces and Matt thought, what can I do with these to like integrate them into the collection? So we shipped them to Italy and we put them in this beautiful like plexiglass heel and it's just really cool because nobody would ever know that. You would think it was just a little cute metal detail, but it really has the full story of coming full circle. Other things we use would be, oh, all of our nylon is made of recycled fishing line from Scandinavia which is super cool and it feels amazing and it's really strong and windproof and has been doing really well also um, in stores. There was one detail on a pair of trousers over here. So on one of the pieces it says, the earth is dying and we don't notice it. The earth is dying and we don't notice it. Can you tell me about that? It's more and more something that we're talking about is global warming and the earth changing and what can we do to help in any way and it's hard to come up with answers it's hard to come up with the right solution so the reason it says that there is kind of just to keep saying it you know to put it in your face a little bit more as a reminder matt does a really great job of translating the utilitarian techniques into clothing construction for example we use like sonic welding which is normally used for packaging and once matt saw that happening in a factory he's like we need to figure out how to do this for clothing so it does this really beautiful thing on the seams and it uses the vibration and sound to seal the fabrics together on this on this plastic fabric it looks especially cool where we have our logo Um, But we, I mean, Matt takes things from, he loves like the extreme sport world, like ice climbing, for example. Last season, we had this crampon that went over your hiking boot that was originally for ice hiking. And everybody wants to wear it, you know, in the streets of New York. So it doesn't even matter where it came from. It's just what it becomes. This idea of kind of apocalyptic clothing and then also naming the brand after your child. There's this like fragility and also ready for anythingness that's built into the brand. Matt is always talking about the future. Every chance he gets that can be used kind of in in an emergency, for example, the ice 
climbing thing? What if the world does freeze over and we all need to ice hike or whatever? I think that the mix of our daughter's name has become equally as important because of it, because we want her to have a healthy, strong future and to be safe and taken care of and have a shelter and all these details that you would be used on a tent or used in, you know, these extreme weathers kind of all come together. Matt is always talking about the future every chance he gets. The, the, the earth is dying and we do not notice it. Here's Matthew Williams. Fashion anthropology. I think Alix has really, um, yeah, it's an experiment, obviously, for Luca doing, being part of a, creating a brand for the first time. And this evolution of so-called street fashion with the craftsmanship of luxury craftsmanship, you know, made in Italy, this whole idea. Um, how do you feel about Alex's role in, in that sense? Like this idea of creating new culture. I don't see a separation between fashion and street fashion anymore as it, as it once was in the past. If you look at actually look at the garments that Alix does, obviously they're special because we do it and we do so much research and development in the fabrics and the process. But there's still like a blazer, which every fashion brand does, or there's like a Chelsea boot. There's things that are archetypes that have existed in traditional fashion brands for a long time. I think what's different is that from the generation that I come from, I'm just pulling things that are personal to me. So it can only just be about now, you know? And now rap music is pop music. People wear Supreme with Dior, with Balenciaga, with whatever, Nike. It's like everything's just just a mix. And our brand kind of accepts that and reflects that where we have things that if they deserve to be made to an extreme you know quality and level like a bonded leather jacket that's two grand we also have underwear that's 35 bucks or socks or a three-pack tee that's very inexpensive so we're just we're just being authentic to us I don't see a separation between fashion and street fashion anymore as it it once was in the past. I'm just pulling things that are personal to me. Slam Jam, connector, patron, platform, movement, attitude, and always authentic and underground. Luca Benini may have started it 30 years ago, but just as Matthew says about Alix, Slam Jam 2 will always really be about now. Thanks for listening to Fashion Anthropology. Fashion Anthropology de Gozaimashita. On revient bientôt avec une nouvelle série d'épisodes, sharing more of the movements and minds shaping fashion culture today. Fashion Anthropology.